वेलकम बैक विल स्टार्ट विद एन सी आर टी क्लास सेवन पॉलिटिकल साइंस चैप्टर थ्री दैट टॉक्स अबाउट हाउ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वर्क नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वी टॉक अबाउट द मशीनरी फॉर लोकल गवर्नमेंट इन द लास्ट क्लास इन द लास्ट क्लास सिक्स नाउ वी वुड बी डिस्कसिंग द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट कंपराइज ऑफ एम एल ईज दैट आर मेम्बर्स ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली now each state is divided into various constituencies each constituency is run by uh, or has an elected mla so let's say these are the constituencies and each constituency would have a separate mla this mla is elected by the people and looks after the problems or hears the problems of the people in the respective ward or the Uh, region from or the constituency from where the MLA is fighting the election. Now, when it comes to the government mechanism, there are two kinds of parties that come into play. One is the ruling party, and other is the opposition party. Let's say there are twenty constituencies in any state. Now, of these twenty constituencies, if ten or more constituencies are obtained or are won by a given party that party becomes the ruling party and all others become the opposition party now this opposition let's say you have the common two parties that you must be familiar with are bjp and congress now let's say in one case you have any party let's take it as x y z x becomes the ruling party now why would become the opposition and z which are kind of independent candidates which would also form the opposition what opposition does primarily is it opposes or argues or questions the uh, decisions taken by the ruling government so let's start with the basics so as we know the government is divided into three hierarchies the local government state government and national government local government we have talked about in class 6 state government would be our focus today now to what kind of problems is the state government answerable or the mlas in a constituencies are answerable so if there is a water shortage if there are kind of communicable diseases that could be seen if there is spread of diseases that is seen or if there are kind of dirty streets pollution water problems or any such issues all these would be addressed by the uh, state government so these are the things that the state government tries to answer now coming on to the members of legislative assembly as we said state is divided into constituencies and each constituency has an elected mla now mla are elected by the people they become the member of the assembly they form the government they represent the government and work on behalf of the government so bring in the problems that the local uh, or the common man, man is facing to the uh legislature try to authorize and supervise the work and most importantly they have the executive responsibilities now we have already talked about the majority or the ruling party and in contrast to the ruling party you have the opposition party that exists now what is a constituency as we said constituency is an area from which the voters living in that region choose their own representative and each constituency has one representative now the example that has been discussed in the ncert text is of himachal pradesh which had 68 constituencies so if the party wins wins more than 34 seats then that party becomes the majority or the ruling party and the remaining ones go into the opposition now each state has mlas now some of these mlas are elected or have a kind of dual function they work as an mla and if they are part of the ministry they would become the ministers so they would have the dual responsibility of acting as a mla as well as a minister now when it comes to state setup you have chief minister who is the real functionary similar to the prime minister at the center and similar to the president at the center you have governor in the state so chief minister is the real working uh, uh, like the person who really works at the state level he uh, comes from the ruling party and is elected by the various members of legislative assemblies or mlas from the different constituencies now chief minister 
minister selects his own cabinet and the other ministers who would look, look after into separate departments. So let's say if there is an agriculture department, irrigation department, water works department. So each department who would look after that department would be allocated or would be finally decided by the chief minister. Chief minister has the whole and sole responsibility to run the government along with the various government departments which are headed under various ministries. Now comes the governor. Governor is the actual head of the state who appoints the chief minister or who appoints the chief minister along with the other ministers and asks them to take the oath. He himself is appointed by the central government. Uh, so governor is not elected, he is appointed by the central government and he works within the rules and the regulations given in the constitution of India. So this was the basic hierarchy. So you have chief minister and the governor and then the various MLAs. Now these MLAs meet at the legislative assembly which is also known as legislature. At the legislative assembly you have both the ruling party and the opposition party that meet together. Then they have various questions, arguments, opinions that are raised during the meetings in the legislative assembly or the legislature. As we said, some of the MLAs who are elected have dual role. They work as MLA as well as ministers in the respective department. So they have to look after both the responsibilities together. Most of the decisions are approved by a kind of common uh, yes by most of the MLAs. And there are debates on various topics like if there is some health concern. So primarily in the last class we talked about health issues. So we will be continuing that again in this lecture so it would become more easy. So there would be kind of debates that would be raised for example deaths caused due to cholera. Is there, a, uh, there is a deficiency or insufficient supply of the beds in the hospital. There are ample of ORS packets that are being supplied. There is water or cleanliness issues. Is there any shortage of water? Uh, problems like cleaning the garbage. So all these are the address that are discussed or debated under the legislature or in the legislature. And these debates are finally brought down or jotted down and finally approved. So all those things that are approved become the part of the uh, change that the government can take into and rest of it goes uh, away so all the important decisions are taken in this manner. Now how does the government work? So people express their views, people express their problems since ours is a democratic setup uh, it's people for the government of the pe uh, government and by the government uh, by the sorry uh, government of the people for the people and by the people. So ultimately it's people who are the main say. So you have the people who express their ideas, express their problems, express their views. These views are taken into consideration by the MLAs. Now these MLAs or ministers uh, conduct press conferences where journalists are asked to or invited to visit and they can ask or hear questions. In the press conferences, ministers explain the various steps following which they would take any action into the matter. Then sometimes if the situation is acute or worse, the ministers do home visit to the local people and in some cases if there is rea uh, really a necessity, compensations are allowed for the uh, specific cause. So all this is looked behind with a high level inquiry committee. Once this committee approves or gives a nod, then the action is taken. Now this action can be taken based on the department that problem deals with. So if it's problem dealing with health or water works, it would be PWD or uh, the water department or the health department that would come into play. Then again, newspaper and media have an important say because there are certain issues which are raised by newspapers or the media and ultimately that comes into the notice for the government and government is pressurized to work on those issues at priority. So those are some of the things. Government has the right to make laws on certain issues. So for example, it can make laws saying that every urban area there must be a toilet that should be built in or uh, a health worker should be appointed in each or every village. So these are some of the laws that could be taken into action in the rural areas or the urban areas and changes can be brought around by the government machinery. So this was a kind of very fundamental introduction on the, uh, the setup for the state level machinery to run. 
the eligibility for mlas chief ministers the conditions the appointment requirements and all those we would discuss in the higher classes as we move forward so since it's class 7th and it's a kind of very fundamental idea that we are putting forward we are just trying to create a base where we would uh, work forward to understand the concept in detail so stay tuned for with our further lectures have a good day ahead